in 2011, I was the president of the former uh, Chestertown Arts League. Um, and Jalisha Crow was the president of the former Artworks. Uh, it is those two uh, smaller arts organizations that merged um, in 2012. So um, uh, it's a long history. Getting, getting started has, is always um, a challenge. And two organizations that took you know, a tremendous amount of pride in their own organization. What we needed to do as individual presidents of our organizations to actually get that organization merged. And I will say one of the, the differences in the two organizations was that Artworks um, was a board uh, run organization and River Arts was also board run, but with a membership, a voting membership. So one of the four, first things that I need to do with the Arts League was to make sure that our membership understood the pros and cons of the merger and, and in particular, whether or not we could afford that merger. So it was a lot of just kind of fact finding and, and, and uh, presenting to the membership uh, all of the wonderful options of a merger, but also answering that question. Lolly Sherry uh, took a look at that property and thought it was a wonderful property for the two arts organizations to take a look at. And uh, though it needed a complete remodel, uh, it was indeed uh, uh, an interesting, close enough location to High Street uh, that it felt like, you know, it wasn't very far off. And also just enough space to really design a nice gallery. Well, uh, one of the negotiations was just about that. Uh, what shows uh, uh, Artworks ran and what shows Arts League ran and how we were going to make sure that we didn't shortchange either one in the new organization. So actually we had an agreement in place where, in fact, it's why we wanted two galleries right away to make sure that everything offered in each organization would be the first year uh, also offered, and, you know, unless we chose otherwise, but it would not be a one organization was going to lose out in terms of the things that they valued. The Arts League ran monthly shows, uh, and they uh, they were open to most art, most medium, most artists. So uh, they didn't want to lose to lose that uh, mostly theme shows. And uh, Artworks, on the other hand, didn't do monthly shows, but they had a very thriving gift shop and did also have, uh, you know, a number of shows. They weren't, they were more often artists uh, focused. So they weren't open to all the artists in the organization to participate in. So those were two, you know, it was just important to each organization to have kind of their brand of uh, an arts organization. We kept running classes, um, and I, I'm just talking about, you know, right after the merger. We got started on those things right away. That's not to say that as the years uh, went on that we didn't evolve our programs and our classes and our gift shop uh, and all of those pieces, but, but they were important to us right away, and yes, they were, they were, we were doing them right away. And of course, that included the Clay Studio classes, which at the time was out at Still Pond. Uh, we were so, uh, well, after the merger, we were uh, looking at the Clay Studio and finances, um, felt it was running in the black at that point, and we really uh, thought maybe if it were closer to town, uh, it would really bring a larger audience, and so uh, we were anxious to do that, and when the space opened up on High Street, uh, we, we went for it. We were excited about it and, and, and got it right away. And I, I can't remember the, the date, but I think it was in 2013, maybe 2014, we opened in town. So um, yeah, 
that was that that was why, and I think it was a great move. Um, again, both organizations always had run First Fridays in their respective organizations, so it wasn't new to us to be doing it. But what was new, we had this new gallery. It was larger, it could hold a lot more people, it took longer to walk through it. Um, so I, I actually think it just, yeah, we, we started at first, we weren't even clicking in the numbers of people, but we were really pleased with the numbers of people. A few years into it, we, we started clicking in numbers, people as they came in, and we would have 500 in an evening, in a first Friday evening. So uh, yeah, they were always big events. They were just, they started our shows, they were openings for our shows. Um, but I think just the, the fact that they were just so consistent and there would be something new to see each time you came out uh, was, and just the social aspect of it was just a, a, a huge incentive for uh, a nice audience on first Fridays. And uh, that was, again, an, uh, a show that Artworks had always done. And Sue Wright at Artworks was the uh, originator. And I know that she he, he quickly uh, stepped up to being to chairing that first uh, joint uh, River Arts annual show. In the Arts League, uh, that was, uh, we had already started Paint the Town. Mary Pritchard was the originator. Uh, so it had been running several years before we merged. And uh, activities in the merger were just bigger. There were more people, there were more volunteers to run them. Keep in mind, we still weren't, weren't, weren't that. We still didn't have an ED. Uh, we had a, maybe a 10 hour a week AA to kind of keep the gallery open. So um, volunteers were everything to us then and, and still are. So um, Mary Pritchard, uh, she again chaired the first merged um, Paint the Town. She was always a, a, a big uh, advocate and, and supporter of that. So Art in Bloom was a River Arts creation. Uh, it, came, it came about because we were always looking to partner with other organizations. I think it was a, just a common uh, understanding on our part that the more we reached out to our community, other community organizations, um, the, the more support we would receive back for being a, you know, a, a, what we thought was a premier arts organization, community arts organization. So we, we've always thought Floral arrangements were pretty cool, and uh, pairing those with the uh, paint, the the paintings or or whatever pieces of art in the gallery at the time would make for a really fun exhibition and a fundraiser. And we just reached out to a lot of the folks that we knew did floral arrangements, and had them. We actually had them do draw a number of the wall that they needed to choose a piece of art on, and then they would de develop or create a, the floral arrangement to match that or to complement that piece of art. Uh, again, the studio tour um, preceded River Arts. It was a, uh, had a long history at Artworks. Uh, was a fabulous activity, and of course, we wanted to continue that, so it continued to grow, um, and as you know, <laughs> uh, as one of the uh, chairs uh, for a number of the years, um, yes, it, it was, it, it's just one of our premier events, and it continues to this day, and it's, it, it continues to grow. one of the first opportunities to start to develop that was 
when the spot right next to River Arts came open in the breezeway and the parent and we thought, oh, this is our first chance to really start a, a River Arts hands-on museum for children. Kids came in every Saturday to do art projects. And if you ever just happen to stop by and see the energy uh, and fun that, that kids and their parents were having, this was not a drop-off spot. This was a place for, for the whole family um, to be enjoying some projects together. So always, it, it has grown since then into something way more. We know the art of stewardship is a, a Greg, Greg Moritz organization. It's, it's to use artists to help promote the need for stewardship of our planet. And, and Greg regularly shows at Carla Masoni's gallery. Carla introduced us to Greg and we started talking about how we might do an exhibition that followed his his organization guidelines and he was generous with his time and his art. He always let us use a piece of his art to promote the event. He, he and uh, Rebecca Hofberger uh, uh, from the Visionary Museum were the judges of the show. Uh, and it was just, it brought out some really interesting art that was designed to help folks understand the importance of stewardship of our planet. Um, Humans of Penn County was about my favorite exhibition. It was a six month exhibition. We just kept putting in new shows. We, it, it was based, uh, I, I was gonna say roughly, but it was based pretty much completely on the Humans of New York. I don't know if everybody's familiar with that, but uh, a photographer started taking pictures in New York, uh, was, um, was making sure he'd covered every single area of New York. Uh, and then started, as he was taking pictures and talking to folks, started adding short quotes to go with it. Uh, a lot of books and really a lot of humans of and locations all over the world. So we decided this would be a really fun one for River Arts. Uh, we are a county organization, so we, we started um, with some photos and quotes from folks around the county and then invited everybody else in the county to also submit photos and quotes. So we created posters out of those and I think we had five exhibitions of, the, of different of those posters. Um, I just felt like it gave everybody a chance to demonstrate their creativity. It gave us a chance to demonstrate how large and diverse and wonderful our community is. Um, just all together, I th just thought it was a lot of fun. So Amazing People is one of about eight oral history uh, exhibitions we've done over the last 10 years. And this one was focused on actually Gordon Wallace and I were curating the, the show. This one was based on interviews we did to people who were growing up, uh, many of them parents, uh, without the means to meet all of the needs of a growing family. And so we, our focus was on just the strength and resilience and creativity, folks who don't have enough money to make the ends meet easily have, have to come up with. So uh, that was, uh, that's what the exhibition was about. And that's why Gordon and I were excited about doing it. So it's so fun when uh, we when the we have the schools uh, share their art their student art uh, in the in the gallery. Uh, it's a nice, it's actually a really nice place for the student art art to be showcased. Uh, but it's really nice for all of us to get to see the, the creativity that kids bring, and uh, also to kind of honor the teachers, the art teachers in our school system, um, who are working with our kids. So that's, that's grown to be an annual event. I, 
I was on the board at that point, and this was an idea that Mary Pritchard brought to the table. Uh, it was she and her daughter had just attended a recycled runway in some area of the country and just thought it was hysterically funny and, uh, and, and very creative and uh, suggested that might be uh, a, new, a, a new look for our gala. And uh, the board agreed. It was it was pretty it was a pretty exciting idea, and uh, it got named. It got renamed Reclaim Runway because apparently Recycled Runway was already taken. Uh, and so anyway, but it was the same concept. And the uh, the two or three years that it ran before the pandemic, I think, um, just again, once again, showed how creative our community is and how much fun we can have with that creativity. I have to say that way preceded me, but uh, Mary Lee Schumann, as long as I have known the Empty Bowls program, uh, was a major leader, uh, probably the creator of, of that. Uh, it, it started at Artworks and continued with River Arts and has continued to this day. It's a really, it's a really cool program if people aren't aware of what it is. It's um, in exchange for a, a handmade bowl by one of our potters, Mary Lee herself, create, you know, creates a hundred of them, but uh, they bring in students, uh, uh, high school and college and uh, all other kinds of volunteers to create the bowl. Um, they sell the bowl, uh, they sell a bowl of soup and the profits go to the food pantry. So a lovely idea. And um, yeah, I think all credit probably goes to Mary Lee Schumann. I love, I love being part of River Arts so much because I love so many of the activities that we were doing. I'm passionate about oral history, love photography. So, I mean, this, I'm just speaking for me personally now. Um, so that just having the opportunity to create so many oral history exhibitions that involve so many diverse members of our community and being able to share their stories was just incredibly uh, rewarding to me. Um, and I just feel like other artists probably feel the same way, that just having a chance to um, use their creativity in so many different ways 